reminded too. Yeah, I'm reminded too of like uh, something that's I found much more helpful than like resolutions for the future is like unity and the burning bowl ceremonies. Anybody ever gone through like a burning bowl ceremony on yeah. this night on the 31st yeah. of December? How beautiful! What an opposite to making using the time to make resolutions for the future. It's just taking all your grievances, all your resentments, all your struggles, all your future aspirations, all your goals, and throwing them all in the bowl, and burning, <laughs> you know. Yeah. To me that's very much more like the Buddha, empty the mind of everything, good, bad, right, wrong, everything you think you want for your life, just put it in the bowl, and have a willingness to just turn it over and let it burn. And then it's brand new. Like I, I just don't, I don't have goals for any day. That's fun. I like to wake up with big eyes, like childlike wonder eyes, you know, of wow. Kind of like that scene at the end of Fifty First Dates with uh, uh, what's it, Drew Barrymore. Is is that's the final scene of the movie? She's She's up there, he's taken her away. She doesn't have this memory, but he's, he's taken her away to Alaska, I think, and she opens up the curtains, and she mm -hmm. goes, wow, you see her face. It's like a little girl face, childlike wonder, like, whoa. She's waking up and looking out on this scene up in Alaska. Imagine just waking up that way every day. You know, talk about a reboot. You just don't have a clue. You don't have a goal you know, other than maybe peace of mind, you know, which is what you're practicing, that's your practice of peace of God is my one goal, the aim of all my living here, the end I seek, my purpose, my function, and my life while I abide where I'm not at home. If you're going to have a goal, that's a goal to have, the peace of God. And is that practical? Yes! Mm -hmm. And so what if your life as you knew it starts to dissolve, if, if it starts to break apart, like Humpty Dumpty, if it starts to fade away, it starts to dissolve. It's all part of like a retranslation. And isn't it great that you can just give yourself over to it? Like, let the retranslation begin! Oh, so-and-so died. Oh, so-and-so disappeared from my life. Oh, this and this and this. After a while, people start leaving your life. They're, they're disappearing. It's a disappearing act. They're going, going, going. The most consistent face that I've had in my life over the last 10 years is my three-legged cat's face. That's the one face out of the last 10 years. Isn't that wonderful? Everyone in this world is trying to get continuity in terms of relationships or this and this and this and I'm, I'm happy to let the chips fall where they may. Let the great retranslation begin. If I do not know my own best interest, then suck it to me. That's, if you know my best interest in every single circumstance, and I do not, then show me. Not show me the money, show me the vision. Show me the love, you know. Show me the way. And, and when you kind of wake up and you start to feel that, okay, I want this, that's the prayer of your heart, then things can start to shift and change a lot. I've even loved working with people who get, you know, they go through their whole life kind of compromising. And they compromise, compromise, compromise. In fact, they've compromised so much that they don't think they're compromising anymore. Even though their whole life is a, one big compromise. And then they get diagnosed with a terminal illness. And then they think, uh-oh, it's almost over for me. Time's almost run out. And then they start to question. Then they start to really live because they feel like they've only got a little time left, so they're gonna, not going to waste it. And they take off like a rocket. They go on the spiritual advancement like they've never gone before. All right, maybe it's a little bit of fear motivation. <laughs> I think the time's running out. But still, the Holy Spirit uses contrast, you know, and, and they start to take off and they start to really live. Like if I've only got five months to live, Ooh, what am I going to do today? The ego saying, well, you can do this, 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 forget that. I've only got five months to live. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up over there! Enough of this! <laughs> Enough, I said. I've only got five months left. 
And they really go for it. And they take off like a rocket. Did anybody ever see, what was the, the movie that um, Robert Redford's daughter did? What was it called? The Red? We saw it. It's the one where she's diagnosed with this this terminal illness and she... Nope. That's right. Yeah. The guitar. Yeah. It's the guitar. It's a red guitar. It's the guitar. If any of you have not seen the guitar, you need to watch. It's Robert Redford's daughter made this movie. And the woman in the movie, the, the, the lead character, she's diagnosed with this terminal illness. And, and she, she gets fired. I think she gets canned. And she's diagnosed with a terminal illness. And she goes through such a major transformation. She's, she's sure she's going to die. She got fired. So she just goes and she gets this loft apartment. And she's got her credit cards. Her, she's been working at the shop. And he goes like that. She goes, she buys the best. She orders everything. She gives herself everything that she always wanted. Even when she was a little girl, she wanted this little red guitar, like an electric guitar. And she wanted to learn, she learns how to play it. And she goes through such, she buys and buys and takes, she gives herself everything that she wanted. Talk about getting over the unworthiness issue of I don't deserve. She just charges, 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 charges. And, and then by the end of the movie, she totally goes into remission. It was all the guilt and all the unworthiness of thinking she didn't deserve it that was the sickness. And then she's shocked where she's got it. It's just a great credit card bill <laughs> at the end. But isn't it worth it <laughs> to, to know that you're worthy? Besides, the world's going to disappear anyway, right? It's, it's, all <laughs> it's all for that experience of worthiness, you know? So that's a great movie. Yeah, if any of you haven't seen it, the guitar. There's also that one with Queen Latifah. What was that one called? She's so good in that, isn't she? I love Queen Latifah. Yeah, she gets misdiagnosed. It's a, it's an, yeah, it was a misdiagnosis, I forget how it happened, where she's got this terminal illness. So she's got this nest egg, so she decides she's just going to spend it all. And she goes away and uh, to this fancy hotel, and she's like, give me the best of everything. It's a, what's the best thing on the menu? Well, there's this, give me one of everything, you know? And so everybody thinks that she's some uh, very wealthy person who just is living the great life and and because she's on her you know at the what she thinks is the end of her life she doesn't hold anything back she tells it like it is and so everybody is attracted to her because she's free she's allowing herself to be free and uh, and then you know it's it's as you might imagine but it's, it's beautiful it's a powerful fun story yeah and some of you I think Tom Hanks says it's the worst movie he ever made but actually Metaphysically, I think it's the best movie he ever made. He just doesn't know his own best interest. Uh, Joe versus the volcano. Uh, and it, because, again, he's diagnosed with terminal illness, a brain cloud. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, this brain cloud. And so he goes and he, swear, he thinks he's going to die. But he's got this dead-end job. He's making Vaseline petroleum, rectum petroleum in this, I mean it's the d darkest looking job and the fluorescent lights you know in his face and he's, he's twitching and he's just, he's got the most dead and they, they make it up, Kathleen Kennedy Spielberg, they make up the worst job in the history of the universe and he's got it and then he's diagnosed with a brain cloud and then he starts to feel like I'm gonna live and he turns his whole life around. Meg Ryan plays like three different characters in the movie and and he goes through all these transformations. That's the one I was mentioning with the big moon that he sees, you know, and, and thanking God, thank you for my life. But it's, it's a, these are the kind of movies that are in the movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment that the Holy Spirit gave me because they're all about seeing that the world doesn't hold anything that you want and even when you think you've got the worst life ever then he gets the, the diagnosis of a brain cloud and he's told he's going to die very quick. <laughs> so then this guy shows up, this, it's Meg Ryan's uh, 
character's uh, father who says he's got to throw himself into a volcano because he used to be a fireman and save people and everything. And so he goes on this great adventure and it's all about him letting go of everything that he believes is valuable and taking this journey. And he does, the, the guy gives him a credit card so he can go buy, 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 you know, the best luggage, the best everything, you know. It's, you know, we're on to it now. These three movies we just talked about, the guitar and this Queen Latifah movie and Joe versus the Volcano, they're all the same story. That you've just been fooling yourself in thinking that your life was what you thought it was and, and that you can have a miracle and break out of it. And the most wondrous, miraculous experience is awaiting you when you just drop the old. And the ego is going to chirp and say, oh, don't you do it. Don't do it. Because it's saying that what the status quo is in your life is, is all you've got. It's all you really know. The other is the big question mark, the big unknown. And, and what you seem to know in this world, what you seem to perceive is all that you've got. It's just not the truth. It's just not the truth. We're ready to really live, truly live a vibrant life, a, a guided life, uh, a sourced life. We have to be sourced. We have a source, so we have to be sourced. But the ego is saying, no, you can make up your own way. You've got a band of time between birth and death to spend however you want. It's your currency. So eat, drink, and be merry because one day you shall die. Like, you better cash in all your chips and get as much scraps from the world as you can. Little scraps of pain and pleasure, you know, to try to just accumulate as many scraps as you can because you're going to die anyway. And that whole thing is a lie. It's just not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. That's not living. We're like riding the wave of, of a lot of devotion. And, and I think it's great with the community experience. You can really feel it. It's a tangible, palpable kind of experience. You can feel the energy of it. And, and that's the ultimate of the collaboration. That's why we're collaborating. You know, it's because it, the way is easy, the way is clear. It, you know, before it was like the way is straight, the way is narrow, and from a time perspective it can seem like a very straight and narrow path. You know, like, oh boy, how can I live that life? But, but now we're on the wave and we've, we've got all this love and all these mighty companions around us symbolizing that. You can just kind of relax like that and be carried. <laughs> just carried into shore. <laughs> That's what they tell you when you're out, kind of caught in a current, you know, don't, don't try to fight the current. And, and when you're even in a car that starts spinning, you know, just gently turn the wheel in, you know, and, and relax. Don't, you know, because people try to do the, the things when they're fighting against the current or turning the wheel, you know, to try to get out of a spin, it just makes it worse, because there's that efforting.